So I've been inspecting all these, all the all the parts here, and I did go ahead and take the uh, the rear side off, and it was that was probably the the spot with the most rust, and uh, so I took it out to the shop and took a pin and put it up against this side. This side had a, a flat on it already, and I figured it'd be easier to, to push it out this way than the other way. So I just got to you know put it on a vise, well padded. Um, took a pin and gently knocked it out of there. So I'll be inspecting this and, and looking at the flatness of the piece. You know, I'll just put it up against uh, uh, up against a square on a flat surface and all that good stuff, and see if uh, see if I can bend it back a little. But other than that, the next step I'm going to take. Uh, I have some double lot steel wool, and I'm going to use the, that Hops number nine solvent. Um, I'm just going to take some of the Hops number nine. You always recognize that smell. So I'm just going to lightly coat it. See, it's already starting to come off. I'll lightly coat it and then follow it up with the double lot steel wool. So, just for a quick update, um, I've been working on these parts. It looks like they're coming out pretty good. You can see the all the surface rust is getting removed, even that little. The residue from the, the tape I was talking about that came off nicely. Um, even the magazine tube, it came off pretty good. Uh, this bottom plate was probably the worst shape of everything out there just from all the gummed up junk that was in there. But uh, so you can see here also I got most of that residue off. There was some gunk in here. I have no idea what it was, but I used the steel wool and it got rid of it. It looked more like, I don't know, I don't know if it was the residue from the tape or some glue or something, but, uh, but I'll probably go back and, uh, and work on this some more. I'll go ahead and go the next step and take these, this spring out for your safety latch. Okay, so I have started uh, the cold bluing process and what I do first um, I got some alcohol and it does fine uh, it evaporates relatively fast but uh, if you have some uh, other stuff that might work better but uh, you know I just used uh, alcohol get some cotton balls out and uh, get all the oil and uh, um, any residue off off your parts and the main thing uh, maintain, you know, even this, the Oxfo Blue, it even says, um, it may be advisable to remove excessive rust with fine abrasive cloth. Thin oil and thin rust need not be removed. But to be on the, be on the safe side, yeah, I, I still try to uh, get all I can off um, before I start. And this piece and I'll I'll try to get a, uh, a before picture but this is after six to it was probably more like eight eight coats um, of the Oxfo blue and a couple of tricks I found that I like to do I'll get uh, and I have a little bucket here to to catch my stuff just in case I start getting messy but uh, I'll get the Oxfo Blue. Uh, let's start on this piece because I've, you know, sanded down some rough spots. And you can see here on the very tip of it, I've already started. Um, but I'll get the Oxfo Blue, put a coating of it on. I guess I'll do it real quick. Hang on. Let me, uh, let me put some gloves on real quick. Alright, 
uh, highly recommend some gloves, especially with the Oxford Blue. But uh, cleaning, you can do with or without. It's your choice. But you know, so you can see, I'll, I'll put a coat of it on. Handy bucket down. So usually, you, you dab it on, um, and you can see it start to discolor. Always have a uh, you know a soft cloth or a rag, and and it even shows per instructions. Uh, dampen small cotton pad with oxo blue and rub area to be retouched until colored. Wipe dry with clean cloth and burnish bright with uh, one aught steel wool or finer. Um, I've been using double aught steel wool, but the trick with mine, instead of just you know dabbing it on and then wiping it off, you know looking at the at the color and you can see it start to start to change up here already, and then going off and polishing it off. You know, and then go back and do another coat. Well, you know, that's one way to do it. I had my best luck by putting it on there, and before it dries off, I take the steel wool and it's almost like rubbing it in, and uh, it really gives some good results. But you can see what it's doing. It's actually going. It, it happens. It seems like a little quicker. And I guess when you're using the steel wool with it dampened with the Oxfo blue, it uh, it seems to get down into the pores and cracks and crevices a little more uh, quicker and a little deeper. And uh, and like I said, I've done it. You know, at least eight times like that on on this piece. Uh, to get it to where it is. So I've been working on this for quite a few hours now. Uh, I've done a few of the few of the parts. You can see how it's turning out. Looks like it's getting a good even spread and along the barrel. looks much better than the original. And I'll probably still do another coat or two. I just want to make sure. This was the toughest part. Um, the receiver housing here. The barrel wasn't too bad. It actually came out pretty nice um, without a whole lot of effort. Uh, the receiver part, yeah, these parts, they were because they were you know, if you, and I'll show a before and after picture, but you can tell where the bluing had really worn off on it, and I must have put, uh, who knows, 10 or 12 uh, coats, you know, the cycles of coats that I was doing, putting it on with, uh, uh, with a cotton ball, um, and then before it dries off, I would go in with uh, using double aught steel wool. And then I would go over there and, and scrub it while it's still wet with the Oxfo Blue. It seemed like it, it sped up the process a little bit and it helps uh, uh, get a good even spread, it seems like, instead of blotchy, you know. When I first start, I would concentrate on one section and, and scrub it, scrub it, you know, do the process over and over, you know, three or four times. Same thing on each side and on the rear. And after it starts to, to to show some uniformity, and you can kind of tell it's you know you can start seeing where it's getting a uniform color, uniform spread. Then I'd stop that, get some fresh Oxbo blue, and start coating the entire thing, wiping it off with a towel, um, and not just wiping, but you know, get in there like you're trying to polish it. Um, and sometimes you'll you'll end up seeing some residue still coming off of it. But uh, once you can put the, the Oxfo blue on it wet, let it sit and then scrub it down and buff it with your towel and it's clean, 
then you're in pretty good shape. Well, I have to say I like how the bluing process turned out. Um, you can see while you're looking down the receiver and the barrel. It really gave a good job on a nice even coat down the receiver um, and down the barrel and all the individual pieces there. Um, it's a nice even coat, um, an even color. It got rid of all the uh, um, the rust, you know, other than the blue, but uh, but it's turning out pretty good. And like everybody says, um, it doesn't match the traditional, you know, hot oil bluing from the factory. Um, but this does not look bad at all. It's looking pretty good. And once we take it out, you know, hunting and shooting a few times, um, we'll see how it holds up. And the best thing is, I mean, this is cold bluing. It's great for touch-ups. You can go back and touch up at any time you want. Um, so this should uh, help this rifle last for you know another 30 years. But uh, uh, the next process, we're going to refinish the stocks. So uh, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, you can like us on Facebook, find us on Twitter, and of course you can visit our website at v3tactical.com.